Good. Good. We will call the um, Iredell County Commissioner meeting Tuesday, August the 4th, 2020, to order. And um, <clears throat> we will pause for a moment of silence. You would stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Jones, I would ask if there are adjustments to the agenda. Yes, sir, we do have one adjustment, and that is the removal of item 8.1 from administrative matters. We have no presentations of special recognitions or awards this evening. We have no appointments to the board before the board this evening. We do have three public hearings. Would you tee those up, Ms. Jones? Absolutely. Thank you, Vice Chairman Bowles. The first item is a public hearing to consider a request uh, to rezone approximately 5.5 acres on Flower House Loop. And Mr. Todd with our planning department is here to make this presentation. Thank you. Mr. Todd. Good evening. The uh, first rezoning we have is uh, up on the screen at exit 42. It's outlined in blue. Uh, five and a half acres. The staff is supporting this request to rezone the property to general business conditional district. Uh, again, it's adjacent to the interstate and adjacent to other commercial uses. The uh, planning board did vote nine to zero in recommendation for this request, and there's been no opposition. Um, the property lies within the 2030 horizon plan as corridor commercial, and traffic impact should not exceed the road capacity in the area. This is a conditional request, and the applicants have matched the conditions that were put on the property to the south of this request. Uh, just a map showing the area that's identified in the 2030 Horizon Plan for Corridor Commercial. Uh, just an aerial of the property, uh, mostly wooded. There is a uh, currently a single-family house on the top corner of it. A couple pictures of the property. Uh, looking directly across. And I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this request. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Todd? No. Good. Okay. Hearing no questions, uh, we can open the public hearing this evening. And I have two gentlemen that have signed up, uh, Lewis and Brian. Um, I don't know if you have any anything to add to this this evening or not. Is there is there anyone else here that would wish to speak for or against this particular rezone? Okay, Lewis and Brian, do you have anything to add that Mr. Uh, Todd has not already covered? Okay, you're. You're here to answer any questions, okay? Hearing no, hearing uh, nobody wishing to speak on this particular zoning request, I will close the public hearing. And we are unable to vote on this because of our time constraints uh, pursuant to the general statutes. We must leave this open for a while. So I guess next meeting, the 18th, yes. Ms. Ms. Jones will yes, address absolutely. that. Um, all of your public hearing items, because we do not have the full board present, you have to have a 24-hour waiting period. So all of the public hearings, we can conduct the public hearings, have comments, close the public hearing, and then the actual vote and action will need to take place on August the 18th. Is that going to work with your timelines, guys? We, just, we have to follow these procedures. I mean, it's, it's pretty explicit the way it's laid out. So, But there's been no opposition in... 
None is anticipated. None is anticipated. So nobody else will be able to speak on this matter at our next regular scheduled meeting on August 18th. We'll bring this to a vote. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next is our second uh, public hearing, and we'll refer back to Mr. Todd. Thanks. Uh, this request, again, on the screen, outlined in blue on Faith Road. Um, staff is supporting this request. It's a request to rezone the residential office. Uh, residential office is our lowest intensity commercial designation. Uh, essentially, as the title says, it allows for mostly just office uses. Um, planning board did vote nine to zero to recommend support of this request. Um, the property lies in the uh, medium density residential designation in the land use plan. Um, Within that designation, it does allow for small-scale commercial uses, um, so the RO does fit the plan. Um, it also results in repurposing of an existing structure. Um, there's currently a, a metal building there that's been used as a church for a number of years. Uh, this will allow it to be used for the office space, and traffic impact should not exceed road capacity. Okay. Uh, map showing the 2030 horizon plan for medium density residential. An area of the property does consist of three parcels, and you can see the uh, current building on the middle parcel. Uh, a couple pictures of the property directly across the road, and I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Any members of the board have questions for Mr. Todd? No, sir. Mr. Robertson, you go. Okay. We will open the public hearing. And we have one gentleman, Logan Wyatt, this to, uh, are you just here to, uh, would you like to make comments or are you just here to answer questions? Okay. We would ask, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak for or against this particular rezone? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And as well as the first, we will move forward with, um, we've held the public hearing and pursuant our general statutes, we must leave this open for a 24 hour period. So therefore it, it falls to the next regular scheduled commissioner's meeting, which is August 18th, 18th and then we will vote on it. Thank you, sir. And, and again, just as a record, there, nobody on the planning board opposed, no, but he spoke in opposition, and no commissioners who are here have asked any questions because they had concerns. Right. So we can't tell you how we're going to vote. <laughs> but, uh, but we appreciate your time to come and answer questions, Glad sir. Glad yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Our next item on the agenda is a public hearing as well, consideration of an economic development incentive for the project transformer. Would you like to tee that up, Ms. Jones? Um, I'm actually going to defer that to Mr. Chris Younger and okay. let him present that to the group. Mr. Younger, welcome to the meeting. What can you tell us about project transformer? Well, we would like to thank you for uh, Kozlowski Advanced Manufacturing and Iredell County Economic Development. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to represent this before you again this evening. Uh, again, um, so Iredell County Economic Development, we are here to request an approval for an economic incentive for Keselowski Advanced Manufacturing. On August 7th of 2018, Iredell County Board of Commissioners approved an economic incentive for Keselowski Advanced Manufacturing, LLC, not to exceed $72,000 over five years based on an assessed value of $4.4 million for their project. The creation of 22 jobs included and for an improvement period between August 7th of 2018 through December 31 of 2019. Due to better than anticipated growth, Kozlowski Advanced Manufacturing plans to increase their investment from $4.4 million to an anticipated $14 million with a minimum investment of $9.7 million. They are requesting an extension in the improvement period also from December 31, 2019 to December 31, 2020. With the increase in investment to 14 million, the incentive payout would be up to up to $228,000 over a five-year period based on the increase in new tax assessed value. 
I'd like to thank you for your matter and or your attention to this matter and answer any questions you may have and are requesting the approval for this incentive agreement or this incentive grant for Kislowski. Okay. Do we, any members of the board have questions for Mr. Younger? We have vetted this out before, and uh, it seems that uh, young Brad Kozlowski has great wisdom. He has <laughs> moved out into the advanced manufacturing. So right. uh, our hats off to him. We'll open the public hearing at this time and entertain if there is anyone to speak for or against this particular incentive grant. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we, as well as the two previous um, motions, we will, we will have to address this and a vote on the 18th. Do you think that fits in your timeline? Yes, sir. That would be more than ample. I certainly hope it does because I don't know what I would do if it did. But uh, <laughs> we appreciate you presenting, and we will be back here on the 18th, the regular scheduled meeting of the Iredell County Commissioners, and we'll bring this to a vote and see if we can't put this to bed for you, sir. Thank you very much. Jim Bozer and myself, thank you for the time. Thank you. They don't need to come back. I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary for you to come back on the 18th. We are, we're well versed on this particular project. Thank you for the job you do in bringing new industry to Ardell County. Yes, sir. Thank you. In the Mr. words of J. Paul Getty, we just need more. <laughs> <laughs> it does provide our county when we, when we actively pursue industry to move in, business, commercial, and industrial entities to move in. That helps bear the burden of taxes for our residents. So... Business is the way we pay our freight, so we really appreciate the job you do. Ms. Jones, would you uh, please tee up the uh, administrative matters that would be appropriate for the consent agenda? Absolutely. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, the first item that was reviewed in our pre-agenda meeting was the request from the Health Department for approval of budget amendment number... Actually, is that one? No. I'm sorry, I'm thinking out loud. We saved one for the 7 o'clock. Um, the first item was a request from the Health Department for approval of Budget Amendment Number 5 to accept a Division of Public Health Agreement Addendum for the Epidemiology Communicable Disease Branch in the amount of $63,513 for COVID-19 containment activities. We did discuss that um, these dollars would be primarily be spent for the contract tracing that we use. We, um, we have additional individuals that we're paying to bring on to our contact tracing team on a contract, and they are doing that for our close contact tracing for COVID-19. And then there is a possibility for using some of this for testing as well. Hmm. The next item was a request from the clerk to the board for approval of minutes from the meeting on July the 21st, 2020. Both of those items were agreed by consensus for the consent agenda. And that's it? Uh, yes, the that's other item we were going to actually discuss. Not on the consent agenda? Correct, yes. Okay, would it be appropriate to vote the consent agenda right now? Yes. Okay, all those in favor for the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All, those, all those opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Welcome to the meeting, Chairman Mowry. It's wonderful to hear your voice dialing in. I managed to survive the, the eye of Ethaeus, or whatever how you pronounce that. We, we were going to ask if you had a wind-blown hair look, but, uh, but uh, we no, are... I don't have enough to be wind-blown. <laughs> we're glad to hear your voice and to know that you are safe, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, next item. The next item for presentation is a request from the Finance Department for approval of an amended project ordinance for the CARES Act funding. And Ms. Robertson is going to make this presentation to the board. Okay. We welcome Ms. Robertson to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. We've recently received a second appropriation of federal funding from the Coronavirus Relief Fund. Mm -hmm that brings our uh, total received to $6.7 million. 
about a month ago we brought a project ordinance to you that allocated those funds um, to the municipalities, to the rescue squads, to volunteer fire departments, and to some nonprofits within the county. When the second round of funding came out, we learned that 25% of the total has to be appropriated to the municipalities. Um, we have done that. This updated ordinance, amended ordinance, brings their um, appropriations up to that 25% and allocates, doubles the appropriation to rescue squads and volunteer fire departments as well as the nonprofits sets aside um, a significant amount for personal protective equipment for contracted services that we may need through the health department or other agencies with contact tracing and so forth. The money flows from the feds um, through the state government and then on to the county. The county is responsible for negotiating and, and requiring contracts with each of the municipalities and the nonprofits. They are responsible for submitting requests to the county and only upon submission of the documentation of their expenditures does the county reimburse any funds to those agencies. Each one is required to, to provide a monthly report to the county finance director and there again the, the county finance director reports it to the state. Any funding that is unspent at the end of December has to be returned and we've set established strict deadlines for each of these um, outside agencies and municipalities to report to us exactly where they are in their spending and any that they don't spend will be reallocated to the county for the purchases of additional PPE or other equipment that may be needed in the future. And you said earlier in our pre-agenda that uh, December 31st was the deadline to get all that accomplished. The, yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Any members of the board have questions for Ms. Robertson? Thank you so much for presenting that. That's, You're uh, welcome. Uh, you know, uh, $3.5 million, and that brings us to a total in the CARES Act, first and second, to 6.7. That's correct. Uh, that that that's that's a great deal of money coming from the federal, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Did you have a question? Uh, no, I would make a motion that we uh, approve. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say. I know we talked about it in pre agenda, but there's a hundred counties in North Carolina. We got seven, almost seven million dollars, mm -hmm. and we're not the only county to get it. We're not the only state to get it. Uh, I mean, this is the money that the counties got. All the counties and all the other states got it. The states got money. Different entities of the federal government got money. You know, if, if people say that, the, that there's been no federal government response or assistance, they're not paying attention to what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's a ton of money that's being spent. A huge amount of money that's been spent. Seven trillion dollars has been spent so far on, on this thing. But for folks to say that the federal government has not come in and helped states, municipal governments, county governments, they're just simply wrong. I mean, we're, we're getting money in here to think to be proactive. And we had some discussions earlier about what that looks like. But just wanted to make sure everybody understood that... Um, that this is a result of, of what's happened at the federal level. Yes. Any further questions? We have a motion on the floor to approve this um, amended project ordinance for the CARES funding, round two. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. We will accept the 3.528881 funding into our county coffers to spend on uh, uh, the appropriate uh, municipalities and will be distributed to the um, volunteer fire departments, rescue, United Way, nonprofits. All right. Moving along, we have no appointments before the appointments to boards or commissions this evening. 
Do we have any unfinished business? This particular meeting is our first meeting of the month and is not one of our public comment periods. That takes place on the second meeting of the month, which will be August 18th, our next meeting. Is there any new business to come before the board this evening? Could I ask one question? Um, Ms. Jones, are you prepared this evening to tell us a little bit about where we stand uh, uh, Sales tax wise, we got yes. we got an update saying it was improving. Yes, it is. Um, we are at, we are three months behind as far as what we're receiving is what was actually collected three months prior. And that is typical. And that is typical. That's the way it normally normally occurs. Um, it's paid. It goes to the state. Then it's allocated and dispersed back out. And there's a three month lag time. But we, if, if you remember, when I presented the budget to the board and I gave you a, a grim outlook regarding sales tax, and we had gone back and made projections based on everything that we were told with what was going to occur with sales tax, I am thrilled to report as of right now, each month has been a little bit better than what our projection has been. Um, sometimes just barely, and this past month, what we received, actually, it was, instead of a decrease, it was an increase, and it was, it was a substantial increase. So we are seeing better sales tax numbers coming in than what we have projected, and that is great news. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that that will continue. And as we continue to track that, one of the things that I've char charged our finance department to do is go and create a report for us of where we're finishing up because we're closing out our last fiscal year that ends June 30, is to go and give us a, a full picture of what the revenues look like because we did have decreased revenues. So there were revenues that we had anticipated we were going to receive in last fiscal year that we simply did not receive as a result of COVID-19. Some of those revenues were recreation revenues, things of that nature. So they're gonna go and give us um, a report of where we ended up from our revenues with what was budgeted and what was projected and where we actually ended up. And then um, we're gonna kinda try to uh, predict and ex extrapolate from that what we predict this fiscal year is looking like based on our projections and what we're actually seeing. So hopefully we'll have more information we can give that back to the board. One of the things that we had all hoped to do is to be able to come back towards the end of the year and put some things back into our budget. So these are steps that we're taking to, in order to prepare for that and try to see where we think we may be, where those revenues are tracking, and it may be that instead of December coming back, we may be able to come back in November or October and look at some of those things, dependent upon where our revenues, how our revenues are tracking and looking. But right now, I should knock on wood, but the sales tax numbers are coming in better than what we projected. And that will be contingent upon, correct me if I'm wrong, our individual responsibility, wearing our mask, washing our hands, staying away from people, and if we can get the kids back in school, there should be no reason that our sales tax shouldn't continue trending up. Would that be, without putting words in your mouth, would that be your opinion? We have got to be responsible. We, we have got to do the right thing and be responsible. We have to exercise our three W's. You need to wear a face covering, wash your hands frequently, and wait six feet apart from other people. And if we can do that, then there's no reason we can't keep our economy going, but doing it in a safe way. Um, we are working with the schools right now with their reopening plans and how they're going to, uh, how school will be beginning. Mooresville Graded is going to be on Plan C, which is completely virtual. Our adult states was on a Plan B, which is the modified plan. So um, our charter schools, they are on Plan Bs, and we are um, asking all of our schools, public schools, private schools, charter schools, please use the resources of our health department and let us help you look, go through those plans and ensure that all those protective measures are in place to make sure that we can keep everybody help, healthy and, and do this the proper way. So, uh, but, you know, if we, if we can continue to do what we're doing um, and everybody be be responsible, as Chairman Mallory would say, and do the right thing and have good civic responsibility. We, we 
to be able to continue on. It is imperative that we get our kids back in school and, and get small business operating again. Everybody back to work. And I think one thing as we talk about small businesses, it's so important to to really go and support your local businesses. Um, shop local. Spend your dollars local because that's the sales tax that we're relying upon. Yes. And, you know, why, there's no sense in going to Mecklenburg County or a, or a surrounding county and spending those those dollars there when you can spend them here in your own county in your own community and support your local businesses because they really do need your need your support. If I, if I can throw in a few comments, just to put things in perspective. You know, I mean, the um, the, the world of COVID nineteen came kind of slamming down really during the month of November. It, uh, you know, the Chinese let it out of the bag in January and February. Some hint, you know, we had indicators that, that this could be bad. And by March, everybody was was in and didn't know what didn't really know what caused it, suspected some things, didn't really know how to treat it. There were a lot of unknowns. So, you know, so the advice that was given to prevent it, to treat it. You know, started at A, went to B, went to C. You know, it's 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 been a learning. We call it a learning curve, but basically, it's just not a, a straight line per se. Part of that process, as policy officials, was we have to run the county government <clears throat> in the midst of this. You know, we're, we're not like a furniture store that can just close its doors and we're done. We had to still operate, and we had to operate when part of our revenue stream being sales taxes, we knew from history when the world gets upset about something that our sales tax revenues tend to go down. <clears throat> Iredell County has a, has a long history of our staff being very conservative about revenue projections. If they weren't, they wouldn't be on our staff, okay? <clears throat> and so our projections, it turns out, are more conservative than reality, which is exactly the way our planning process should have functioned. We were expecting, <clears throat> when those figures were put together, and I say this to so that everybody understands kind of how we got to this point. How did we get here? <clears throat> At the time those projections were made, we were expecting the, the second surge, the second wave to occur in the fall because there was a belief based upon historic virus spreading patterns was that it slowed in the summer and accelerated in the fall and winter. COVID is much more contagious than traditional viral infections. And what we're seeing is when Southerners get hot, they go inside into the air conditioning. And much like our Yankee brethren during the winter when it gets really cold and they go inside during the winter months, Heck, I'm outside in a t-shirt in January because it warms up into the upper 60s, sometimes in the low 70s during, our, during the winter. When people go inside and they live in conditioned air, whether it's heated air or cooled air, that's where this thing spreads. doesn't spread at the beach, doesn't spread at the park, it spreads when everybody's sitting in a, in a room. So the, sec so the, the second wave didn't occur in the fall, it's occurring now. And what we said was that we would wait until the second wave came and was passed before we made any sort of adjustments. And that second wave, we, we think we're experiencing it now, but we haven't been right about everything. The experts haven't been right about everything. So we're really gonna have to wait until the fall to know that our revenues are probably okay. So why do I say all of this? 
the fact that our revenue projections are a little bit better than where we thought doesn't mean that it's over. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods. Doesn't mean we're sitting on a pile of cash <clears throat> and we need to burn it somewhere, okay? None of those things occur. What it just says is that our planning process is working. That's all. It, that's, that's what you just heard tonight. So anyway, very, very happy that our projections were on the right side of wrong, okay? And, um, and it, I, I think it speaks to the robustness in the enterprise of uh, the citizens of Idaho County. And I cannot agree with Ms. Jones anymore. And that is, if you're going to spend a dollar, spend it here. Absolutely. Um, one thing that we, when you're, when you're predicting and you've got your crystal ball and you're looking <clears throat> into the future, sales tax has done better than we projected. But in all honesty, we did anticipate that some of our revenues would have picked up more as far as our fee for services. I don't think any of us anticipated that our rec center would still be closed four months later. Um, so those are those are things that you know we had projected. We thought, well, we'll have a couple months where we'll have it. We'll have it shut down. We won't collect any memberships, but then we'll have it back open. So while sales tax, yes, that is coming higher than projected. There are some other things that it's just happening a little. Your crystal ball is not 100% accurate, so there are some ebbs and flows. But but all in all, as far as the sales tax, that is the largest source of revenue that we did anticipate a decline in, and it's not as bad as we anticipated, and that but is good a news. good number for building permits in June. Right? Yes, great okay. number for building permits in June. Which is an indicator of confidence if, in the market. If all of these breaks, I mean, it seems like we've got some people trying to put the press down on the gas pedal and some people trying to press down on the on the brake but eventually when the foot gets taken off the brake there's definitely a foot that's on the accelerator that's ready to go mm -hmm. it's ready to go which which we should all be very optimistic and happy about absolutely so. thank you miss jones i'm sorry i blew that touch cold that's okay but, uh, uh, while you're at the podium, would you like to give the county manager's report? Yes, I would. Um, really, the, the only thing that I was going to update the board on is just the efforts regarding the school reopening. And uh, just really want to commend the community. And a lot of our child care providers that are in our community are partnering with our school systems to try to help those parents that do have school-aged children, our working parents that have school-aged children. And I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation to be in where you, you need to be working and typically your child would be in school and now there's virtual learning for, for some school systems five days a week and for others three days a week and that's difficult and trying to find where your child can go to be able to do that virtual learning and things of that nature. So um, our schools are partnering with a lot of our different child care providers throughout the community, and everybody's really pulling together to get creative and talk about how they can work together and partner together to try to help our um, our workforce and our parents with these school-aged children. So uh, there are a lot of things that are, that are happening right now. We're still re waiting on some guidance from DHHS. Uh, the state is trying to create some toolkits and give us some guidance as far as rules and requirements for child care provide licensed child care providers or maybe other entities that provide camps, after school camps and things in after school care. So there's some guidance that's coming down and we're waiting to receive that. Hopefully we'll get it sometime this week. But just to let everybody know that we do understand there's a need out there in the community because things are a little different trying to accommodate when you have children in school and working. So the community is trying to pull together to, to give some options to help those working parents. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jones, for your well-managed report. We have no closed sessions to be addressed this evening. And uh, with that said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. We stand adjourned. All right. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Bowles.